welcome back to an abundant harvest homestead i'm papa pepper today monster truck and i are taking a a journey we're uh heading across state line part of it to meet a guy we've never met before i'm actually doing a little research on my way up listening to some of their youtube videos and uh, for a while now something really interesting has been happening um i guess like six years ago when we did it we were part of it right now there's some other people doing the same thing and it's these families deciding they need to get out of the city they need to return to a simpler life they need to return to the country they need to take stewardship of of more they need to be more self-sufficient more self-reliant they need to be faithful in the provision for their families and they make incredible incredible short-term sacrifices you guys have no idea how many families I know that for a season lived in tents, for a season lived in campers. They made those short-term sacrifices because they have a long-term goal. And it's, it's amazing how many of these people want to take stewardship of some land, want to be growing more of their own food, want to be harvesting more of their own food from the wild, raising their own livestock. How many of them dream of a, a debt-free life and so many of them you know they stick to that hard they tell themselves no constantly because they can't afford it and they do not want to fall for the trap that is debt I'm uh, about less than an hour from my destination and I'm really looking forward to this for a number of reasons so come along for the ride I think you'll uh, I think you'll enjoy what you see
Mark, you ready? Ready. All right, guys, this is Papa Pepper from the Abundant Harvest Homestead. Today, I'm chilling out with a new friend. Now, I only met this man yesterday. If he's a familiar face to you, you've probably been blessed by checking out some of his videos or knowing him in person. But if he's not, his name is Ethan, and he's from 180 degrees from average. Correct. I wanted to first of all thank you. Yeah, thank you. Kind of uh, a stranger who got invited over to help him with the project. I've spent the past two days drenched in sweat, yeah. working on a project. What is that project we're currently working on? We are working on building a new house. You know what I love <laughs> about building a new house? The, the part that I absolutely love the most about this, not that it's going to be a home, not that his family's going to live in there, not all the, the fun and the fellowship and the homesteading activities and the canning and stuff like that that's going to go on. But you guys are doing this out of pocket, yeah. debt free. If yeah. you guys have followed me for a while, you know, I believe debt is a curse. It's a voluntary curse in most situations that people choose. And uh, paying all that interest, you gotta trade a lot of your life away to do that. So you guys had a really cool opportunity yeah. back in your Minnesota, yeah, Minnesota. and you guys bought a farm. We bought the family farm. Yeah. The family farm. And that thing was yeah. way we, back in your family. Yeah, 120 years it right. had been in the family. So, And I was able to buy a portion of it, what was left of it basically sure. from my dad. So, Right, and that's somewhere yeah. that your dad grew up? Your My grandfather grew up. Wow. My great-grandfather bought that land, yeah. So you had bought that up a number of years ago. Yeah, it was getting to be. I bought 40 of the 50 that was left probably in the early 2000s. Okay. Well, it was right after the crash. Okay. So I so bought it in like 08. Sure. So I suppose 12, 13 years ago. And you guys had plans for that. I mean, a vineyard, cold yeah, hardy kiwi, yeah. cold hardy peaches, all sorts yeah. of different stuff. We, we wanted to go. And you guys, it. you were working on some of that. We were. But now you sold that. And we're in the. And you're middle of nowhere in the Ozarks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How'd that happen? Right. Yeah. That happened, I mean, I think we were just, uh, it was a long time coming, but things just changed there. You know, the, the people changed, the types of people that were living there started changing, and we were just really more in the suburbs than we were in the country. And, and I think you see a lot of the wild kind of get swallowed up as cities expand. I saw some of the drone footage, I assume, yeah, yeah. of all these, you know, little three to five acre plots with big old houses springing up right around his property. Also, you were about 40 minutes from Minneapolis. From yeah. Minneapolis, and up there, 40 minutes is like 40 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> here, 40 minutes is like <laughs> could be two miles. hours. Yeah, three hours. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you can understand based on a lot of the stuff happening in this world while, why if you're going to plant roots, if you're going to try to grow stuff, if you're going to try to have somewhere you can raise your family and maybe even generationally pass it on, yeah. which is something that if you're debt free you have an opportunity to you do. You can do it. A lot of people think, oh grandma and grandpa did, now we get the house. Like, no that wasn't their house. Right. You get their debt. That was you, the you bank's know. house. Yeah, that was the bank's house. They were yeah. just paying a monthly fee, kind of like renters, to get it. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, part of it. I'm gonna title this, you know, if you had one chance to live life here on this earth, what would you be doing right now? Exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what he's doing. Yeah. And you guys, when did you actually move off your property, sell it, and start looking? Well, we had to break it up into multiple lots to sell it. Right. Uh, it was just worth kind of too much money in that amount of property to sell as, as a piece. whole yeah right. but you can make more the, the number it. of people that can afford it at that price so you we basically had to split it and so we split the 40 into 220s and then we had another 10 acres with a house on it the, with another house on it and so we had to have three different sales wow and so we sold with the first sale closed uh last september so almost a year ago and that's when we took off and we headed to, uh, well, we headed to Jake and Becky's from White House on the Hill, friends of sure. ours. We stopped in there, in Missouri, spent yeah. some time there with them. And then we came to Branson and started looking. And it was, we were gonna come here and then we were gonna go to the, the um, Smokies. Sure. So it was kinda. But you never made it to the Smokies. No. You found we your found, home here. We found it. And he's got some great recent videos if you guys wanna check out about kinda finding the dream property. He had some stuff, I mean, you almost wound up kind of being my neighbor as far as I'm yeah. concerned for where yeah. a rural lifestyle, if he's a half hour to 40 minutes away, 
that's my neighbor where we yeah. come from, <laughs> yeah. you know, but so he was almost on the other side of the lakes, you know, down there in Arkansas, wound up up here. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people, not only in this general area, and we were discussing over lunch and some yesterday about, you see a lot of families that are making some big changes to their life and location. And sometimes if you want to change your life, you need to change your location. For us, there were so many rules and regulations and restrictions and permits and stuff like that, that we couldn't live the life that we wanted no. to in a way that we could afford to do it where we were, which was your neighbor yeah. up in Wisconsin. So, yeah. you know, your old neighbor. Now you're, yeah. now you're kind of new neighbor. <laughs> now you're a new neighbor, stayed away. <laughs> and uh, I guess one thing is, what is just a little bit of your overarching goal in this relocation, in these things that you're doing now to prepare for a future for you, for your family, for others? A, a huge part was to cancel out debt. So just getting out of debt, not having uh, debt, not having a mortgage, because I wanted to be able to focus on the things that I find truly valuable and important. Before I we did all of this, I was working a job at a startup, and it was, um, you know, it was all working. The business was great, but it was 100 hours a week for 11 months or more, and I just realized I was basically an absentee parent, uh, absentee husband. I didn't really exist in my family, and I was stressed out. And one day I just came home and quit. I just I told Sarah, I'm like, I mean, I I literally was, I was like, well, what if she says you can't quit this amazing job. So I literally one day found myself Googling, can adults run away? And then I was like, okay, I know now, like, this, this is over. And so I just went home and I said, Sarah, uh, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I'm quitting my job tomorrow. And she just said, thank God, good. I bet you she wanted a husband. I mean, yeah. that's why she married you, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Not so, just to get stacks of cash periodically right. some, somewhere, but, yeah. <laughs> So I think this entire journey has really been one of aligning because what, what was happening there is my values, what I valued in my day-to-day -day life, they were diverge, divergent. They were not the same at all. And that caused me to have a lot of sort of stress and inner turmoil because the life you're living isn't who you know you're supposed to be. Right. Do you know what I mean? I think it's interesting because from a very young age, they'll ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? Meaning, what do you want to be known as based on your pro profession? What do you want to do for a job? And it took me years to figure out that, you know, my true identity is who I am to God, who I am to my wife, and who I am to my children. And anything I may or may not do to make money or for a hobby or anything else is going to come after those three. And I had to restructure my entire life to focus yeah. on those three and a lot of other stuff falling into place since and so I know where you're coming from. Yeah, and that's exactly that's exactly what we did. And it's been in stages. I mean, first it was quit the job. Then it was try to work from home. Yeah. Then it was, and so it's just been on and on and on. But now I finally feel like we're really within striking distance of being able to, to really li live each day where I can say, well, today I really did what I was supposed to do today, you know, and nice. not, not feel... I mean, even now, I still got to work for money and I got to do this sure. stuff, but we're getting close to where that'll be a lot less. Right. And so. And you guys are in a building stage, you know, I mean, there's a lot of investment of time and effort and materials. Yeah. And even right now, we've got Al from MNC Family Homestead yeah. came out to help. Uh, Adam from uh, Like a Bully yeah. Homestead came out to help. Uh, I got invited up by Dan from Pure Hearts Homestead. I ran into him for a minute just years ago at Baker Creek. We hit it off and we meaning to get together. Um, he said, hey, this would be a great opportunity. And uh, yeah, so a lot of time and effort. There's sweat equity going yeah, in from for sure. neighbors and friends yes. and strangers. And everybody, it's been such a blessing, everybody helping us out and all everybody. You yeah. and neighbors from around here and everyone's chipped in. And, and it's tough because we really, we're cutting out the existence on this land this was just trees and hills yeah you know so it's been just to get to this point it's been a lot of work right. and, and a lot of people have helped us so and a couple things too i mean you guys see we're sitting in front of a woodmiser lt40 sawmill portable sawmill he's got a stack of logs right here we just put in two beams or posts yeah with a big beam on top of it that he just milled himself 
last night and today, right? Yeah, this morning and last night. Yeah, and uh, if I look around, I mean, we don't got trees like this on my land, but this is a great resource to have with an opportunity like this. I pointed to the rocks on this property earlier, and I said, hey, no, you got a lot of those, that's a blessing. And he goes, oh, I've been thinking of stuff I can build with them and use yeah. with them, and spend some time both with his children, and then with him also just munching in the wild. I started grabbing a snack, and his kids were like, whoa, what are you doing? And what was one of the most amazing things you find out about the wild edibles in this area? The, that, that you can eat what we call razor vine, which around here they call green briar. Yeah, green briar, saw I had briar. no idea, and it's tasty. It it's is. It's really good. It's amazing. <laughs> and if you eat it young, you don't get into that 20 foot worth of green yeah, barb while you're yeah. growing in your woods problem. It's, a, it's, a, it's great. Yeah. Bless, another blessing, just having all of the, something you thought was a curse and now it's food. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's cool too, like, this guy's a stranger to me. I saw some of his stuff on YouTube, but I, I knew that there was a man who had pretty much forsaken all this world, had to offer to restructure his entire life, moved very far away to start out fresh, to try to do something. I'm like, I, I understand that. And I'm like, part of me coming here is just to help make dreams come true. I love seeing that. I'm not very skilled, but I do feel like I'm kind of like an intern almost because working under Dan, yeah. I've learned a lot that's going to yeah. come in really handy for me as I continue yeah. to work on some projects on mine. So I'm getting a lot out of it, even though I'm investing time and energy and effort. And a cool thing, too, is you heard him mention a home-based income. You guys walked into a place in Ava, Missouri, and yeah. they called you out as homeschoolers. Home, just like, yeah, like instantly. Yeah. Homeschoolers. Bam. And you guys are homesteading. Yeah. And uh, they're about to have their fifth child. Oh, and I was over yesterday eating lunch, I think. The midwife showed up and I said, that is so awesome to see, especially these days. Um, technically, hospitals are for sick and dying people. Yeah. Pregnant women, the vast majority of the time, are not sick or dying. And if there's no complications, and this is actually going to be your first. This will be the first home birth. That's cool. We've done. Yeah, we've done. She's been all all natural birth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So That's she's good. never she's never been had an epidural. Awesome. Or never no had a C section. No. Well, she or had to. She had. Um, I can't. Sort of well, a... they had to put her on magnesium, okay. and because she was, I can't think of the term. Sure. Women, you'll know. It's when you basically you could die. Okay. Your blood pressure gets really high, and they sure. they have to put you on magnesium and that but drug free as far as painkillers. No painkillers, like nothing like that. So my wife's done seven like that so far. His is about to have number five. Um, women out there, if you're wondering, there's a natural way to have children that if sure. you want to be involved in and kind of take stewardship of that in your life, you can do that, and you don't need to immediately run to painkillers, which may take you out of the game and lead to some other things too. I think that's something that, you know, she want, she's always wanted to really be able to be focused so she can like kind of stay in it right. instead of just, and you see people that kind of lose it in panic and all of a sudden now they're, I mean, right. you add drugs into that mix and all of a sudden that's a whole lot easier to just, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's, a, she's been amazing giving birth to babies, that's for sure. Yeah. So. I'll tell you what else she's amazing at, food. They have <laughs> rolled out a... A plethora of just amazing stuff. And my crazy thing yesterday, even Dan from Pure Hearts Homestead was saying, these are the best little mini sandwiches she had. They were like little sliders. But the cool part is on top, they had this seasoning. And she's sitting here explaining stuff to us. Like she made chili for dinner because she didn't want to put forth a lot of effort because she's very pregnant and, you know, yeah. feeding a crowd and stuff like that. But she goes, well, I really wanted like an everything bagel seasoning, but they didn't really have a good mix. So I just like made my own. And I'm like... <laughs> just that's the type of stuff in the carrot you know yeah she that does. can come from people yeah for sure well we appreciate everyone coming out and helping us and sure well you've shown it yeah very much. well thank you i'm glad that's good to hear so guys if you're not familiar with this channel let me tell you what uh one of the other guys explained him as just a wonderful storyteller the way he does his videos i wish i could do some like that um because it's, it's very good definitely some stuff that kind of draws you in you get a real feel for it you're you're kind of with it, and uh, it reminds me of like uh, Roots and Refuge, who you also know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Their channel intro yeah. is like one of the most wholesome, heart-touching, yeah. you know, type thing, and uh, very cool stuff. I'll put his channel in a pinned comment too, if you're not familiar. I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, even if I'm not able to come here ever again, I'm looking forward to see what happens, where these guys go, kind of how some of their plans for the future unfold. And I'll tell you what, uh, you're different than me in a lot of ways. Yeah. You just First of all, some of the resources he has, the ways he plans things out. He planned his house. I mean, 
some of the stuff I'm like, who in the world would design a house like this? And he goes, well, I did. And I'm like, well, it's working. I mean, we put forth, I'll roll some clips after this with some serious effort we put into it. Yeah. But uh, but it worked. And we were wondering if we needed to like call in some reinforcements or something because uh, we got it up there. It was though. four guys with about, I don't know, what is that? Almost 30, 36 three. foot long. Yeah. Yeah, 36. Triple. Two by 12. Yeah, two by 11 yeah. and a quarter. Yeah. Because apparently they, they cheat you on. Sure. And we had three now. twos in there, so it was like a <laughs> six by 11, yeah. 30 feet long. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that was true. <laughs> and guys, kind of tying back to, you know, the title of this, if you only had one chance to live upon this earth, what would you be doing right now? He's got to focus on his life and on his family and on God's call for it, not only here, but eternally, that he wants to live in such a way, I got a quote that's, you know, live in the present yeah. in such a way that when you get to the future, you don't regret your past. Yeah. And I think it's moves like this that you're making yeah. that's going to help set you up for it. And I would highly recommend, you know, checking them out if you guys want. Um, I just wanted, I haven't put out a video in a minute because I've been up here in the middle of nowhere with no reception, just working really hard. When I get back to civilization a bit, I'll roll this out for you guys. And uh, thanks for coming along with the journey. We'll roll some footage of us progressing a little bit more. If you want to see other stuff, you'll have to find it somewhere else because I'm going to go home in a bit. Pop out. See ya. Thanks. Okay, everybody, everybody stay on it. Everybody stay on.